Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you something basic about creating experiments on volunteer science, which is how to do different uh, pages of, of content. So, you know, say you have, you, know, you want to do a, a consent form on your first page, and then a, a survey on your second page, an image on your third page, and um, what you need to figure out is, you know, how do you show just the first page, and then somebody clicks a button, it goes to the second page, it hides that first page, um, and they do something on the second page, click a button, goes to the third page, hides the second page. This is, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that today. Uh, and I'm going to do this as sort of a live, live coding demo. So you get a sense of what it's actually like to try to build something in volunteer science. Um, I will probably forget something, and so we'll have to look it up. So uh, be a little patient. Uh, feel free to fast forward. This code will be hosted on GitHub, uh, the final code that I create, just as an example for you to use um, alongside the video. All right, so let's get started. So you know, here I'm in my, my test account. Uh, I'm just going to create a blank experiment called the pagination demo, and it has nothing in it. Uh, so it's a blank experiment, no files. Uh, pagination requires the HTML elements, which will be the pages themselves, and then a little bit of JavaScript to determine when a page gets hidden and when a page gets shown. So I'm going to go ahead and just create an empty file called pagination.html. I'm going to add that. I'm going to get out of that. I create a new file as well for the JS called pagination.js. Add. Okay, so now I have an HTML and a JavaScript file. The fundamental um, part of, a, of pagination is uh, the di the division element of the div. So let's we'll start off creating one div called ID equals page one and. So this is going to be page one. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this. There's going to be some content in the middle of that. I'm going to create page two and page three. Now I'm going to say page one is welcome to my study. Here's page two, and this is the last page. Now to show you what this looks like if you don't use um, this page control. This is all going to be vanilla JavaScript and HTML. There's nothing special about this. I'm just showing you um, the basics of how to do this. So as you can see, welcome to the study. Here's page two. This is the last page. All of those um, exist uh, and are visible on this particular experiment. And what I want to do is I want to make it so that these pages show um, First, the pages that I don't want to be shown get hidden at the beginning. So the way that you do that is you set a style, um, which is a CSS element technically, uh, but you can write it in HTML. I'm going to set display equal none, or display, the value of display, display, display is none. And I'm just going to put that down here, two. And so what display none is, it just hides this, this element. And now display none can actually go on, I think, anything. Uh, it could be on the, the, the paragraph uh, HTML element or a, even an italic element. I, I think it's a pretty flexible style definition. But the idea of using a div is that it's at least, the div is relatively code neutral. It just helps you break up uh, parts of your code. And so the div is, is a nice way of, of creating pages. You could also use, I think, the section uh, element as well, sort of another way of breaking things up. Um, so display none, display none. Let me get out of this. And now we're just going to see the welcome to my study page. But I, you know, I'm calling this a page in a very loose sense. Oops. Oh, I didn't save it. Top left. Don't forget to save. Launch again. All right. Welcome to my study. Um, again, there's no CSS. I'm not making this look nice at all. Uh, if I wanted to use CSS, I could make this you know, take up the entire page and you know, create an outline and change the color, the background color to white, so it actually looks like a, a classic sheet of paper. Uh, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to show you the mechanics of creating multiple pages. So now we have page one, page two, page three. Page two and three are hidden when the study starts. And so now what I want to do is create a function that when I press a button on page one, it hides page one and just shows page two. So let me go ahead and create a button. 
this is where I'm likely to need some help um, from Stack Overflow. So show page two. Um, so this is going to be a button. Then the button text is just going to be show page two. And I'm going to add a function. Actually, uh, let's see. Yeah, on click. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's, let's, there's a lot of ways to engineer this. I'm going to just do this as like a show page kind of function where we're going to hide all of the pages. And we're just going to show whatever page uh, I pass it. Um, bum, bum, bum. So I have a new button. Oh, this show page function that takes two as an argument. So basically, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a function that says, I'm gonna hand you a page number and you're gonna show it. Uh, actually, let's do this. I'm gonna say show page two. So I can call it by ID. It'll be a little easier to write that way. Uh, do, do, do. I'm getting an error. I expect a character unquoted. That I mean, it shouldn't be an issue here, but uh, da -da. well, let's say that shouldn't be an issue. Okay. So define a function. So function show page, and it's going to take page. I'll call it page ID underscore page ID. Now the coloring here is automatic. This is just the, the, the text reader or the um, code reader that we have here. But when I pass it page ID, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide. Um, you know, actually, this is not a good way of. Here we go. I'll do this. Show page ID, and I'm going to pass the one that I want to hide. That way, I know it's, it's easy for me to figure out which which page I want to hide. Page ID. Okay. Um, Ah, you know, I can't actually show you another cool way to hide everything. I'll I'll do that in a second. Well, function. All right, so I'll call this one show page. I'm gonna call this next page. So what next page is gonna do is gonna allow me to hide the page that I'm on and show the next page, whereas the show page function is going to hide all of the pages and just show the one that I want. So let me just. Why not show page ID? Sure. Um, so I'll, t I'll show you both ways of doing it. Uh, okay, so show page ID is going to take, I'm going to use jQuery. And this is how I specify uh, show, we'll start with hide, because we want to we hide the page and then show the next one, because we, we don't want to show the next one and then hide the first one. Uh, that'll look odd to see the second page show up and then the first page get hidden. Oops, this is a hide, right? So this is job uh, jQuery. It's just a, it starts with this um, dollar sign, which is, which is the equivalent of a, um, a get document element. Um, it's saying get this hide page ID element, which I'll define a little in, on, in this page. I'll have to change this just a little bit. And call the dot hide function on it, which is just, um, in in JavaScript terms, adding the display none style to page to whatever the hide page ID is. In this case, it'll be page one. And for the sake of time, the opposite of that is the dot show function. So if I say show page ID dot show, it'll show the page that I uh, this this element whatever it is it could like say it could be a paragraph element or it could be a section element whatever element you, you grab here um, so we're going to use that as a page two and we're going to say oops because this is a hide page first and then the show page the page two be shown so hide page one Again, I'm not sure why I'm getting an error. This shouldn't be an issue. We'll see. OK. So this actually should work the way that it uh, is written now to, to show me page two. It's not written to go from page two to page three. So let me just do this. Oh, this it's saved. OK. Let me quit, restart the demo, and see how it works. OK. My button? 
Oh no. Okay, so Control Shift J. It's going to let me see what's happening. Okay, so this isn't registering this at all. I wonder if I take these out. I mean, I like me pass passing arguments. Okay, let's try this again. Control Shift J opens this um, console that lets me see what's going on on the page. Aha, unexpected identifier. So more likely than not, I'm not able to, this is a valid error and I don't know. Oh, I know what it is because the function has to be put into the quote when you're doing an on click <laughs> for all of you JavaScript experts here. Now is the time for you to laugh. Um, okay. So this should be fine. Um, the, the function itself has to be wrapped into the, these quotation marks. I'm not exactly sure why, but um, so this should be okay. And that's the thing that I always screw up when putting buttons in. So I forget when I'm adding function to buttons. Okay, so this should work and it doesn't. Sweet. What's going on? Did I not? No. Okay. Quotes are right, page IDs are right. All right, so it looks like everything's fine. So let me just see what happens if I just type this in. Okay, so that's not working for whatever reason. Um, so the function is wrong. Oh, it's reversed. Hide page ideas first. Bring them. So this should be right. <laughs> it was trying to hide the one I wanted to show and show the one I wanted to hide. Now I fixed it here. I'm going to try and test it locally before actually thinking that I'm done. So I'm just going to add the function here in the console. Again, Control Shift J opens the console for Chrome. I think it's the same in Firefox. Just copy this function in. Now it should work. But it doesn't. <laughs> All right, hide page, show page. So the hide page is page one, show page is page two. All right, so let's go and figure out why this isn't working. Uh, this doesn't know what hide page is. Hide page ID equals page one. Okay, now this should work. In principle, these all work. <laughs> um, all right, so we're not even getting to hide page. Oh, oh, duh. Because this is still show page, not next page. Remember, I split this into two functions. I forgot that I need to go back and change this. Blech. Okay. The joys of live coding. Uh, okay, so now this should actually work. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. We win. All right, so now we've hidden page one. We're showing page two. Um, again, the reason why this is less effective um, is that I have to know the page that I want to hide, and I can only hide one page at a time. Um, this shows one page at a time, so it's not very flexible. Um, it's, it's it's nice. I can if I wanted to. I can you know go ahead and just add this button to page three or page two. Change this so it says page two and show page three. Update this so it's the right information. And this is actually all we'll need to do uh, to make this go from page one to page two. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, actually, what we'll do. We'll make this a next button, because usually if you're doing this as a survey, this will be our next buttons, and I'll show you how to do a back button too. All right, so quit. So now this will go all the way to the end of our experiment from page one to page two to page three. Next, next, ta-da. All right, there we go. Um, while I'm thinking about it, let's do a back button. Use the exact same function, actually, just so because we read left to right. Next, back, 
We'll just go backwards. So, we'll, uh, oh, there's no back for page one. Page one doesn't have a back button because there's nothing before it. Okay. So this will hide page two, and this will show page one. And that's all you need to do for a back button. Uh, when you have this little function here. Okay, and this will hide page three, show page two. Bam. All right. Quit. Let's refresh this. Next, ah, back, next, next, back, back, next, next, back, next, back, back. Okay. Well, fully forwards and backwards moving study. Uh, one interesting fact uh, that you should pay attention to when having a next and a back button is that uh, when you have people you're able to go forward and backwards in your study, you have to figure out when you want to save the data that they can go back and forth through. Uh, so you have a survey that has a couple pages and you want to do a back button. The issue is you have to figure out when you want to actually save the data that they're putting into those pages. So say somebody gets to page 10 and they want to go back to page 1 because you know, something they, they realize something's wrong. Um, you know, do you save all of the data from page 1 when they, when they enter it in the first place? Or do you need to save it when they click the final submit button? Um, when, they, when they finish the survey and they say, yeah, I'm done, you know, do you want to save it then? And the issue with that, um, with waiting to the end, is what happens if they don't make it to the end? They get 95% of the way there and something happens, you lose that data, especially if it, they're on like the last page. Uh, or if they're on the last page and they don't click the you know, finish button, you, know, you lose all that data. So there's a risk there. Um, on the other hand, you know, if you save the data every time somebody you know, clicks a button, you, know, you save page one when people um, finish page one. Um, if they have to go back, you have to go back and um, save the data again when they go back and change their data. Um, and in volunteer science, you can't go back and edit data that was created before. You just have to um, um, save it again as a separate line. And then when you do your data analysis, you have to look to make sure that you don't see question one being saved again. Uh, so that's the trade-off that you get when doing a, a next and a back button, in a, particularly with a survey. OK, so I just wanted to show you this other more general function for showing pages, which is this um, show page thing. And what show page is going to do, it's going to hide every page and then just show the one that you want. And the way that you do that is with a class. So, oh crap, is it ID or type? Oh, brain fart, HTML. Um, do, 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 do. I think it's called class, HTML class attribute. Da, da, da. I love W3 schools. Um, yeah, class. So what you're looking for is you're looking for an, uh, a, a characteristic that you can attach to all of the divs, because then you could say, I'm going to close all the divs that have this characteristic, which is class. You can't use ID, because ID is supposed to have one element in a page. So if I call page one, if, ID, uh, if I set ID page one here, and then I call this page one as well, and then I tried to do this, it would only think of, I think, this one as page one. It wouldn't recognize this as being called page one. I think it's a... Uh, uh, it logs the most recent um, uh, element. So what you want to do is you want to create a class. And we're going to call this class equals, it can be whatever you want. I'll call it pages. Very often what I do is I'll say, I'll, um, you know, if my instructions are a couple of pages, I'll say classes instructions for those you know n pages that are instructions, and then I hide all of the instructions, and then I you know show the the study items, um, and I'll show I'll sh um, you know show page one of study items. That's one of the common uses for me for for classes. So now I have class pages, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the way that this works to. Um, since I know what they're going to be called, I'll just say pages. Um, and this time we use a dot pages because dot signifies classes in um, JavaScript and jQuery. Whereas up here we're using um, the pound symbol to denote a, uh, an ID. Um, so if I wanted to do the same thing, but I wanted to call it pages. And the next page would actually, oh, you know, oh, the next page actually works. <laughs> Next page will already do what we want it to do. What we want um, 
show pages to do. So this is functionally the same thing. All right, again, the joys of live coding is you realize some of the basics um, as you're going through it. And you realize that there is no linear process to coding. <laughs> you discover things as you go. Um, so again, next page is, uh, next page, it you know, closes whatever we pass here and then opens whatever we pass here. And it just so happens that we can pass the, the pages class object instead of the page one, page two ID, or class object, um, class attribute. Um, and then it works exactly like this one. So let me just you know, walk through this. Uh, so dot pages dot hide just hides all of the elements in an HTML file that have that class of pages. Because I said dot pages. So in this case, I'm hiding everything. I'm hiding all the pages, and then I'm just going to show the one page that I want, which is, again, the show page id.show. So I'm going to save. Oh, let me. Yeah, this is sort of redundant, but I'll show it to you anyway. So this is going to be, oops. Um, pound page two. So what's happening now is I'm going to show page. I'm hiding all the pages and then just showing, oops, not dot, hashtag page two. And this, uh, copy and paste it just to prevent misspellings. So this is the back button. So this would actually show page one. This is the next button, so it's going to show page three. Oops, got to delete the, there we go. Page three. Ah, uh, yes. Show page, page two. Uh, okay, so this will work. Let me just demonstrate that. One of the things is as I develop, I'm seeing other things that I can show you as I'm doing it. So I'm going to show you another thing, which is page numbering. Uh, next, next, last page, back, back. Uh-oh, the back button won't work. Oh, I missed the boop. There we go. All right. So theoretically, that would work now that that's fixed. Um, let me show you page numbering. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Uh, so show page is actually nice. Well, show page and again, show page and next page work the same if you pass the dot pages instead of the hashtag page, uh, the specific ID that you want. So let's, but I'm going to show you page numberings. So do, do, do. So let's page one, two, three, one. Two, three. Ba, ba, ba. Indentation isn't doesn't actually matter. Uh, I don't think to JavaScript it really. It's a nice way of viewing it, but you don't have to worry about page uh, indentation. Um, okay, so now every page has a page number. And so if I'm on page two, I can go to page one or three. If I'm on page three, I can go to pages one, two, or three. Uh, for whatever reason, we want to do that. Uh, okay, so let's get out of here. Quit. Relaunch. Cool. Now, which is, yeah, it's not going to do anything. Page two. Here's page two. Page one. Page three. Page three. Two. Three. Two. Three, two, three, two. <laughs> but you get the point. Now you can go any page at any time. Uh, you know, these don't have to be numbered. They could be whatever you want. Again, it's just um, however you define these IDs. They could be apples, oranges, and bananas. <laughs> um, and you can call these pages apples, oranges, and bananas. It's completely uh, up to you. Um, you have the freedom to choose the way that you name these. Uh, just name them something that you'll understand uh, in six months when you come back to it because you um, you had to work on another project or you hand it to somebody else who needs to understand what you're doing. Uh, okay, so that's it. Um, I'm going to, I think what I, uh, let's see, the, I'm trying to figure out what, 
version of this code to keep. If I should keep the show page version or the next page version. I think I'll keep show page just for the um, for the, the GitHub repo. Because again, it's, it's a little bit more um, succinct. Uh, it's a little easier to understand what's going on. Um, and it's a little bit more generalizable. So yeah, if I recommend you watch this video so that you get to get see the next page of the show page. Um, but um, you know, for the sake of posterity, I'll just do show page. All right. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, let us know. Uh, if you have other things that you'd like to see on a Tinker Tuesday, let me know. We're happy to accommodate and show you folks how to do uh, anything as long as it <laughs> can be done within you know 10 or 15 or I think this is maybe closer to 25 minutes. Um, but just to uh, help you, uh, you know, learn your way around volunteer science, learn how to do something cool and new, or just figure out what the, the boundaries are for you know, the study that you want to try to do. All right. Thank you.